Hello, my name's Norman McNamara, or Norms, as I'm known to my friends, and I'm the founder of Dementia Awareness Day, and the Torbay Dementia Action Alliance, and a few other things. And I've been asked to talk to you today about good and bad experiences in the hospitals. First of all, I'd just like to say hi to South Teens NHS Foundation Trust at James Cook, especially the new Dementia Strategy Team, and Beth, Kim, hi Kim, Helen, Tracy and Rebecca. The experiences we've had in Toy Bay vary. Um, I suppose first of all we might as well get the bad experiences out of the way. One of the things, that, the biggest things we, we found in Toy Bay was that the carers and the loved ones of people with dementia wasn't allowed to go in with them when they were having scans when they were having blood tests and when they were having various other things. This other causes confusion and upset and sometimes it may even cause violence and it's purely because the carer, the loved one or the person that's looked after the person with dementia isn't there. There's no familiarity. A perfect example is when I went for a heart scan and they told Elaine that she wasn't allowed in. The heart scan should have taken nine, eight, nine minutes tops. After four minutes, I signalled them to stop and I just said, I'd like to go home now, please, because I was becoming distressed. They said, you can't, and I said, well, I'm afraid I'm going to do it. I started to get up, and because I was so distressed, Elaine had to come in with me. Once I was calmed down with Elaine, um, they carried on with the scan. That scan took three quarters of an hour. It should have been no more than nine minutes. If they'd listened to Elaine in the first place, and listened to the car in the first place, it would have taken a lot less time. The other things that we often talk about is perception of dementia. Now, when I had a cancer scan, I had to have a, um, a chat to the sister before I went down for the operation. I had to have a general because I have dementia. I missed something what the sister was doing. This is a sister. And I missed something, what she was telling me, and I said, excuse me, I, I didn't quite catch that. So Elaine explained to her that I had dementia. Within seconds, a voice went up, 10 or 12 octaves, and she started to talk to me like this, I don't know. Well, of all the people to do it to. So I explained, I am neither stupid nor deaf. And um, she was quite chastised by the time I finished. But it didn't finish there. We went down for the operation and it was a walking operation until they put me on the table to uh, give me a general. And the lady, one of the nurses who walked in behind me, said, this is Norms, he's very nervous, he's very frightened, he's needle phobic, all true. And then she stood behind me and went, he's got dementia. I couldn't believe what she'd just done. I'd seen her do it. The consultants were absolutely shocked. So I turned around and said, excuse me, you know, why did you just do that? Do you not think I understand because I've got dementia? <clears throat> now we thought we were making great strides at Torbay, but obviously not enough at the moment. Unlike you guys, because from what I've been told, you're doing a fantastic job and long may it continue. Now on the benefit side of it is I've always had this idea whereas when it's meal times, when it's medication times, the ward times should be open ended and I believe that the carers should be there when the loved ones with dementia or the people looking after them are having the meals because we all hear about dehydration, we all hear about food charts not being filled in and things like that and I believe that if the courier was there and the loved one was there with the person who has dementia it would be an encouragement for them to eat and for them to drink. Now I know they can't be there all the time but this can be worked out individually and a plan can be made out individually. It's what I like to call a buddy up system but I'm not keen on that actual termage. Termage is that even a real word? Um, term um, because it sounds very Americanized. But I'm sure you can see what I'm getting at. And as well as that, I would love to see 
carers liaising with nursing staff. I would love to see loved ones having meetings with nursing staff. You can use the This Is Me document by the Alzheimer's Society which charts a few things down um, of what the, the person with dementia likes and um, his medication. There is another document out which I will be quite happy to send to you Kim which is about 89 pages longer which not only charts his medications and not only charts his likes but also charts people's dislikes to what they don't like and I think that's as important as what they do like and all this can be made not a life story but can be made up so the nurses know what they're talking about and the carers and everybody else that goes in. It's hard because the nurses, you guys, don't get half the amount of training you should get. So no blame is laid on the nurses. The carers get trained up to MV MVQ level 3 and 4 and uh, they go through rigorous things. I would just love the nurses to go through the same things so they will understand dementia better. I would love the carriers to come into the hospitals and work alongside with the nurses to share their experience. There's, a, there's an urban legend that the nurses won't work with the carriers and the carriers won't work with the nurses. I did a survey on the Royal College of Nurses site and that is certainly not the case. Everybody is for the good of the patient. Everybody wants to work together on this and we think that's why that's so important. As a person with dementia, I would just like to say thank you so, so much for all that you are doing. It's not an easy job and it's certainly sometimes a thankless job. But I know there's thousands of people out there that would like to thank you for what you do. Improvements are coming in hospital. The, most thing, the, the biggest thing I'd like to see is the two words we live by is inclusion and engagement. You must include the people who are capable with dementia. They might have mild dementia, they might have moderate dementia. They're not exactly in late stages. But you must include the family. You must have meetings with the family. You must sit down and talk to the family because the family then will have confidence in the nurses. The family then will know that the nurses care because they're asking questions of what they like, what they don't like, what they like to eat, what they don't like to eat, what they like to wear. God forbid anybody ever dresses me in a Manchester United cap, been a Bo Wanderers fan. You know what I'm saying, you know where I'm getting at. God forbid that ever happens. Um, but the nurses and the staff of the hospital don't know what they don't know. And if they don't ask the family and they don't ask the people if they're capable of um, conversing, if they don't ask the people with dementia what their likes and dislikes are, who are they going to ask? You won't ask a plumber to do an electrician's job, would you? Not at all. So more involvement with the families, more involvement with the carers, and certainly more involvement with the carers, nurses, and the people with dementia. That's all from me, and I hope this is okay for you, Kim. I wish you and your family a very, very Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year from me, Elaine, and all the family. And all you guys have put the... Um, South Tees Hospital, John Cook Departments and the New Dementia Trusted Team. You're doing a fantastic job and by all means please contact me anytime you want through the website or Kim's got my email and my phone numbers. If you need any help at all, I'm here. Have a great time guys. Thank you for asking me to do this. It's been a pleasure. Bye.